What's going on guys, this is Chris here, and um, sorry, this is probably going to be one of my weirder videos. Um, it's late at night, it's July 6th, I haven't made a video uh, since my last video. And the thing is, I want to say, you're going to have trolls, and you're going to have people make bad comments, but when it comes to personal videos with information deep from your heart, I, I don't understand, especially when it's a long time subscriber that I've never had a problem with. One person just pisses you off, and the things that one person can say just absolutely, completely can wreck a man's mental state, especially when he's going through hell. Now, as far as my grandmother goes, she's, she's out of the hospital, thankfully. She came home yesterday, July 5th, but she's not right. Her mind is, is not the same. Her speech is not the same. Her functionality is different. And now she's going to have to require home health care. And uh, that's something new. And usually that's the beginning of the end. When the home health care people start, then goes uh, nursing home, then death. And uh, yeah, I'm happy she's home. I'm very thankful. But uh, I just know it. time is, is coming down to an end. So. I really don't know what to say or do, and uh, it kind of bugs me. Because that's the only person I've ever had consistently. When I was born, my mother and father, they didn't want me, which is not new. No one's ever wanted me, except for my grandmother. And to not have her around. And I, I, I've had a lot of time to think over the years what I could have done differently, what maybe she could have done differently, and there's a lot. I just wish that she understood. Being the generation gap, because she was so much older than me, being the grandmother and not the mother or father, that kind of hurt. And um, That's why I always talk about I want to, I'm getting old because me, I want to. I don't want a huge generation gap between me and hopefully my children if I ever have any. I want to be able to relate and understand. That's why I'm glad I'm young-minded and youthful. Because I just, I think if you're younger and you have children, you can relate with your children a lot better than if you're older and there's a huge generation gap. But that was my problem. I didn't I had someone that. was from a generation where people like me weren't, you know, it was, people didn't talk about mental illness, people didn't talk about, you know, your feelings and emotions. People like me were just called, uh, crazy, I guess. Or, the term, a term would be just crazy. But back then, they didn't share their feelings, there was no, like, he's suffering from this or that mentally. And... The older gentleman, she didn't understand mental illness, so I could never have that conversation with her. Other than the fact she knew I was miserable and under, would understand if I were to do something stupid, she would actually understand, and I've said that before. But, um, I'm thankful she's home, but it just sucks, because I'm going to admit this right now in this strange video, and let me clear this up. I'm in my home, uh, first video ever made inside of my trailer. I don't, it's nighttime. I don't have light in my trailer. I have one little lamp that I use, and that's it. And um, I bring it with me around the whole house. Um, now, dude, I have electricity, I have stuff like that, but I choose not to have light. And I have enough light in the daytime, and at nighttime, for me, I, I'm alone. So I just want to be peaceful in the dark, and that's just the way I've been for years. And if I need a light, I have one little light. It's not very bright, but it's enough for me to see. It's not that I, I can't, I don't have lights, I just, I have light bulbs, I just don't use them. You know, for me it's like, at night, uh, night time is supposed to be dark, daytime is supposed to be light. And that's just the way I am. I've gotten the glow from the television, so, and my trailer's memorized, so I can get through my trailer. I know, like, at night, when the TV's off, let's say I'm asleep, and I wake up to have to use the restroom or something, I know where everything is in my trailer, so I can walk through my trailer. No problem, I can do, I, can, I, I guarantee you I could probably cook a meal in complete dark in my trailer, simply because I know where everything is. I've got it memorized in my mind, so it's one of those things. I've been living here now for 10 years, um, 
So, yeah, um, but that's why I, I just I wanted to pull up the camera and do a little update. A weird setting. Um, it's kind of ominous, this video. I'm shirtless, but uh, I'm not going to show anymore. I'd like to lean back. I'm kind of sitting up. The way the lighting is working with the camera, I had to prop something up on a coffee table in front of me and put some books so the camera could be even. But unfortunately, I have to lean up. So if I lean back, you won't see me as good. Plus, you'll see my ugly, fat body. Then I don't want to scare anybody out there with my uh, body. I will say this, though. Um, for years, I weighed between 250 and 270. And even as recently as uh, the beginning of the year, I weighed 265 pounds. I weighed myself the other day, and I weighed 235 pounds. That's a 30-pound drop. I'm not doing anything differently. I don't exercise. Um, the thing is, I'm trying to be a little more active, be out and about more, and it's summertime, so I'm sweating more. And uh, I guess I would say I'm not eating as much as I used to, but really, I, I don't, I can't explain a 30 pound weight loss. I guess it's a good thing, but my body still looks horrible. And I would hate for a woman to see my body in this condition. See, guys like me, that's why I'm alone, I guess. Guys like me, women don't, don't want a guy with a gut. You know, my body's well proportioned, it's just I have a gut. I have a little flabby man boobs and a little flab under my arm, which I'm not going to show, but I don't have abs, I don't have pectorals, like cut, and unfortunately my body type most women just aren't attracted to it, and what I, I like to, to say something here, I see women with guys who are bigger than me, and the only thing I can say to that is that woman and that guy, no, I can't, I can't really speak, but just the way my mind equates it, that guy did something tremendous for her to get her to like him. Because in a normal situation, it wouldn't be. There's no way a woman that's like, a guy that's like 400 pounds is with a woman that's only like 200 or less. Unless this guy did something absolutely amazing to, to, to a, woo her. Either he's got De Niro, or he just did some kind of act, or they grew up together. They they've known each other for years, so that that would give that guy that kind of uh, better chance. Because I'm only 235 pounds, as I just stated. I'm not that big, and to be honest with you, I've always been well proportioned. I'm a big guy, but I'm a well proportioned. You know, I'm not hanging out all over the place. I carry my weight well. It's just, I guess. At the, at the end of the day, some guys just aren't meant to, to have a girl. Some guys are meant to be alone. And, um... It, it wouldn't be so bad. If it's not the only thing I've ever wanted since I was young. It's consumed me. I so deeply want to lay down with someone at night. I want to hold someone's hand. I want to hug, kiss. I want to love. I want to show off. I want to be proud. I want to settle down. I want to live. I want to enjoy life. Right now, I just exist. I breathe. Yes, there are people out there in internet land, and you know who you are, that care about me, and I realize that. But it's kind of different. It's hard for me when I don't have you in real life. Your words, and especially this past week, have meant so much to me, and you know who you are again. But at the same time, not having to see that physically, it's just hard, you know. I yearn for the physical acceptance of others. I yearn for the physical company and companionship. So I guess a guy like me, unattractive, I'm not attractive, I'm not going to kid anybody. And anybody that tells me I'm attractive, it's probably doing it because they feel sorry for me. And it would be hard for you to prove that you actually think I'm attractive. <laughs> that's sad. Because I, I don't think I'm attractive. Hell, no woman has ever told me that I was attractive. So how can I... How Could you blame me for not believing that I am? If someone was to continuously tell me? I'd say this. If I had a woman, girl, whatever, out there. In land somewhere that sees these videos, watches me, whatever. That repeatedly says that hey, you're attractive. And they continue to mention it. 
And it's not just a one or two time thing. People have told me a couple of times, but those are the people that usually feel sorry for me. But if I can constantly read it, constantly, you know, hey, well, maybe, maybe, you know, to that person. Wherever you are, I don't know. I don't know. See, I thought we were all meant to be with someone, and that's what I was told from a young age. Everyone has someone out there for them. Speaking of eHarmony, I tried eHarmony three times in life, and all the times were during holidays when they had the free communication weekend. And even one time, I, the second time around, I actually paid briefly, was a member for about six months, just to see. And I, uh, I took the quiz, zero matches, the communication weekend. Second time when I actually paid, six months went by, nil. Third time, I gave it a go. And the, the years, a little bit caught in my head, but the first time was 05, second time 07, third time 2010. So the third time, again, no matches. And what I thought about was guys lie on these damn quizzes. I, I answer the questions honest, and maybe to a fault that I will admit that if they ask a question about something that I think is bad about myself, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell the truth. So my opinion is guys get on there and lie. So what is the deal with the success rate that they talk about? Is it true? Is it a gimmick? Have that many couples really fallen in love through eHarmony and got married? I don't know. And, um, I just don't, I don't understand it. I'm not going to lie about anything. I guess I'm, like I said, I'm honest to a fault. I'm too truthful, maybe. Maybe in life we have to lie. I don't think that's the case. That's just me, though. I, why can't a guy be an honest? Am I the last of the honest men? Have women been lied to and cheated for so many years that when a guy comes along who is 100% real and honest, it's a turnoff because they're so used to the guy lying that they can't not believe that they come across a guy who's honest? Is that what it is? And this is probably going to be one of my most deep personal videos. I feel like I'm like, the way I've got this camera set up and doing this video, I feel so so personal. I feel so close to you guys right now. I'm not sitting in a van. I'm right up close with the camera. So, yeah, you know, the e-harmony thing. And, I, and all weekend, because the holiday, I've been hearing about it. But I'm not going on there again. I don't know any other free dating sites, but uh, what I want out there, and this is a huge desire of mine, reality TV is so huge. YouTube is another form of reality because there are most part real people on here making real videos and a lot of people blow up and become famous through this. I'm probably never going to be one of those because of what I do. And I want to make YouTube a full-time career. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment, although there have been people out there willing to help me, and you know who you are, and I thank you, but I need more, and I cannot force anyone's hand. All I can say is, hey, maybe one day I'll get to a point where I can provide better videos, and I'm sorry I'm looking away. I've been watching The Walking Dead Marathon all weekend, and uh, they're about to do a season five preview, so uh, I'm going to have to end this video here, but... Um, like I was trying to say, I, I would love for some guy out there, I'm, uh, use me as a challenge. If you're a dating expert or just someone who helps men find women, and if you know somebody like that, anybody that comes across this video here, see if you can get them to help me. Or if you yourself are watching this video and you're a dating expert, because I'm telling you right now, I I don't think not even a dating expert to find me a woman to accept me as I am. And that's what I want. In my opinion, that's what I told myself when I was 12 during the first rejection. And I do realize every guy gets rejected the first time unless you're like Superman. It's not the fact that I was rejected the first time. Yes, that that's dear to my heart. It hurts. It was the first one. It's just every time after that, more and more of the same. But... I issue the challenge to an expert out there. Because I was watching Hitch the other day. And I know that's a movie. And it was based off a guy named David Coleman, I suppose. Kind of loosely. He's a Hitch-type guy. 
and the character that uh, oh god I can't think of his name Kevin James played he was an office professional so I'm nowhere near that I'm not educated like that or anything but kind of a loser in life bad luck and at the end of the day it worked out for him that's a movie and I'm nowhere near the character of Kevin James. I'm not as stupid or clumsy as him. But at the same time, I'm not also not as rich or as professional or as educated as he was, his character was. But I just I just don't believe there's anybody out there for me. And the rejection over and over and just I have no relationship skills, period. It, it's like I'm in the grocery store a few hours ago. I went in there to pick up a few items and um cashier yeah I'd say she was attractive started a conversation now I don't know if she was doing it to be nice but it seemed like she was really interested in trying to talk to me and that's new to me it's foreign uh, I don't know if she's just doing it because she thinks it's her job or maybe she genuinely wanted to talk to me but there's something in common um, I like to uh, chew uh, Lifesavers Winto Green Mints and I had a bag and the conversation started with her saying oh I love these um, the other day I wanted some and um, I told somebody to get me some and they got me the Pepple Mint I can't stand the Pepple Mint and I was telling her well the reason I'm chewing on the mints is because I'm trying to quit smoking she said she was trying to quit smoking whether or not that's true or not I don't know but that's what she said so she, like she was kind of wanting to have a conversation with me but Really, after that, after you know, the mint conversation, the fact that I'm trying to quit smoking, she said the same. That was it. Now, most guys probably would see that as a kind of a flirt, maybe, or maybe try to continue a conversation because the store was dead. It's not like there was anybody in line. But me, I, I just said, have a great night, and walked out. And I, I've thought about that since then. It's like, these were relationship skills and, and, and so just social skills. Not relationship skills, but social skills would have come in so handy. Because maybe she was kind of like flirting. I doubt it. I seriously do. Maybe she was just trying to be nice. But if I would have had some social skills and been in that position, maybe I could have sparked up a conversation and who knows. Maybe I could talk to her. I'll probably see her again because I go to this store. But my tell would be if I go to the store again, I'm going to specifically look for her aisle just to see if she'll remember me and try to talk to me again. If she talks to me again, but then again, I don't know how to really talk to a woman. I don't have the experience. So, no, it's just foreign to me. And I'm thinking about it like, if I was a normal dude, I could have just spit some conversation at her. Maybe even got a phone number. A normal guy... You like mints, I like mints, you're trying to quit smoking, I'm trying to quit smoking. And if she's not, why would she say she was? If, and here we go. Let's say she's not trying to quit smoking. But the fact that she would even say that she is should have been an indicator to me that she wanted to talk to me because she agreed. And, it, you know, I don't know her, and maybe she truly is, but if she wasn't, and if she isn't, and she would say that, well, hey, maybe she just wants to have a conversation. I don't know. This is hard for my brain to equate, but back to what I was saying. Some dating expert, relationship expert out there, help me, find me, you know. Teach me as a project. I believe 100% at this point in my life, wholeheartedly, that I am 100% absolutely undateable. Meaning there is no woman that will ever give me the time of day as I sit in my current state. And I always told myself, even at 12, uh, I was getting to this before I started rambling. The first rejection, the first rejection, I said after that, if I can find a girl to love me and like me for who I am, regardless of how I am, what I say, how I talk, walk, dress, any factors, looks, whatever, if I can get a woman, or at that time a girl, to want to go out with me, then I can accomplish anything in life because at that point I wasn't in a good place mentally even as a young child or a teenager. I knew that I was going to have an uphill battle and that's why I said if there's a girl that can like me for me oh my god that means I can accomplish anything 
And that's how I still feel to this day. I believe I'm 100% undateable, that there is no woman out there for me that could ever fall for a guy that looks like me, that has the issues I have, that has the lack of skills that I have. I have no game. None. But I am a human being, and I do deserve love. And uh, I do deserve someone. I just don't think that's ever going to happen. So, if there is someone out there, and I do come across them, then I still feel that I can, after that, that would just be a huge boost to everything in my life. That if at this, especially I'm much worse off than I was at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, whatever. At this stage of the game, at 32 years old, if a woman comes along now to like me for me, knowing all the problems that I have, but something I've said about me, you know, whatever, something she's caught in these videos makes her want to get to know me further, and it's interested, and something come out of that, that'd be such a huge boost and a huge up, and then that would let Chris know you were at the point where you thought you were undateable and it wasn't ever going to happen, but it did. Meaning I could do anything after that. My, my confidence would go up. You know, things would just tremendously change for me. So I'm somewhere inside, I'm still that kid saying, you know, come along. You can like me for me. That will help me in life. So I challenge a dating expert. If you see this video or someone out there watches and knows one, I ain't got money, but maybe you can use me as a project. And I would love to go on a TV show. There should be a TV show for guys like me called Undateable, where the dating expert takes guys who feel as though they'll never find anyone. Guys who have the credentials for the show be one, you can never have had a girlfriend in your life. Two, you'll have to have been rejected by just about every girl that you've come across. And those are the requirements. And three, you have to mentally think. They're, you're never going to find anyone. You have to feel 100% deeply that you are undateable. Those three requirements met, you are eligible for the show. That would be an awesome reality show. To take guys like me who are deep down in the dumps, sad, who just want one thing, never had it, always been rejected, and are now at points in their lives where they think it's not going to happen. And they get on this show and someone tries hard as hell, given their expertise in the field, to make their dreams come true. That would be an awesome. Wouldn't it be a great reality show to see a guy like me on there and other guys in this situation out there? My comrades and, and pain. To see us start the show in our condition and then somehow, hopefully, by the grace of God, if you believe in God, by the grace of a higher power, which is what I believe in. I, I don't technically, I'm not gonna, my, I'm just not a religion video, but I'll just say, I know there's a higher power at work, whether he's God or Buddha or whatever. I don't know. But I believe in a higher power at work somewhere up there because some things cannot be explained. But if I start that show the way I am now, and at the end of the show, maybe it's like a 12 week experiment or something, the dating expert has 12 weeks to see if he can match me up with someone who would give me a date and hopefully go from there. Or maybe it's more than that. Maybe maybe it would take longer than choice. Maybe a six month. I don't know. Because there'll be multiple guys on the show, but wouldn't it, it'd be a great reality show for VH1 or MTV or Bravo or A. Maybe not A and E. TLC possibly. I don't know. But I think VH1, MTV, it'd fit along their lines. Undead. Guys who just down the luck and the dating expert so one goal is to see if he can find this guy and make this guy's dream come true so anyways my eyes are starting to hurt from this light and this is 25 minutes I didn't plan on going this long thank you for entering my alone zone thank you for watching hopefully you watched all the way through if you didn't if you skipped through or you know whatever you know, that's okay too. I understand. This is probably a boring video. There's nothing exciting about seeing me sit here in low light talking. But, anyways, guys, I appreciate you having this deep conversation with me. Uh, I felt closer than I ever have to you guys making this video. So, yep, that's it and that's all. And thank you for entering my lone zone. It's time for us to part.